talk is uh, TCHC2 and structure of oxide superconductors. Uh, this talk is given by uh, Dr. Laura Green. This work is done in collaboration with our group from Belcor, TCHC2 and single crystal structure of oxide superconductors. The MIT group has measured the HC2, and the single crystal structure is performed by Yvonne Lepage at NRC Ottawa. There are many other collaborations going on right now with us, and here's a list of some of them now. Most of these talks are being given today, um, but feel free to discuss any of these measurements with myself or any of these authors. In our first paper of lanthanum, strontium, copper oxide, we found that annealing and oxygen can enhance the TC. Here we have a material 1.85.15, which we know is the optimum for this material with this doping level. And as grown is the blue line for resistance versus temperature. By annealing in oxygen, we're able to increase the TC to about 41 and a half degrees. Subsequent annealing in a vacuum will reduce the TC again. So this process is reversible. The composition dependence, that is doping with the strong seam, is shown here. We have resistivity plotted as a function of temperature for the lanthanum strontium copper oxide material. Note first the surprisingly linear resistivities along this regime above the TCs. Note also that as one dopes the strontium, with strontium by taking electrons out, the room temperature resistivity starts to decrease. That is, the conductivity increases one would expect for a doping effect. Conversely, the, um, conversely, the slope is uh, decreased with, with increased doping, which is the opposite one would, effect, would expect the doping effect. This is in contrast to our rare earth substitution work in the lanthanum strontium copper oxides. Here we've doped with the lanthanides in rare earths, as shown here. Note these also have surprisingly linear resistivities throughout the temperature range up to room temperature. Now in, this, in these with the rare earth dopings, we find the room temperature resistivities are all comparable, and the slopes of all these materials uh, in resistivity are all about the same. The main difference here is that the TCs are pushed down and not are pushed down as one dopes along the rare earth uh, row from 36.8 midpoint down to 18.5 for the gadolinium midpoint. We believe that this reduction in TC is not due to a magnetic doping effect, but is due to volume change with the doping. The upper critical fields of these materials are shown here. These are the measurements. The red line is the onset of superconductivity, and the blue line is the midpoint of the resistive transition in the lanthanum strontium copper oxide materials. This is the 0.15 again. Um, note that at 22 tesla, the TCs are, for the onset and the midpoint, are 34 and 28 Kelvin, respectively. For the yttrium barium material of our early work, we uh, show the same curves the red being the onset of superconduct, the onset of the transition, and the blue line being the midpoint of the resistance transition. And again, at 22 uh, tesla, we find that TCs are dropped 91 for the onset and 73 for the midpoint. I've summarized the HC2 values in the following table, extrapolated down to zero temperature. The numbers are printed in tesla. Note the surprising result, barium yttrium compound agreeing with the earlier Bell Labs presentation is that the, uh, the, at zero temperature, one extrapolates to between 175 and 325 tesla, which is one of the highest materials, highest TC material, HC2 material seen to date. I'd also like to point out that the pulse field data was done at 45 tesla. The lanthium strontium material was measured at 4.2 K. The barium yttrium material measured at 77 K. And in both cases, a fraction of the material is still superconducting at 45 tesla. For historical reasons, this is our first yttrium barium copper oxide material measured in February. Um, the material was fabricated on January 3rd, 1987. I'd like to point out that this also has a typical resistive midpoint of about 91 degrees. Since then, we've isolated the phase and grown single crystals. And the results of the single crystal x-ray diffraction are, are presented here. This was done on a 40 by 30 by 15 micron crystal. We have significantly larger in the millimeter millimeters range right now of single crystals. Um, this, is the, this is the material that some people agree and disagree with on the oxygen. 
Um, it is orthorhombic, and it remains orthorhombic down to 90 degrees without any further structural change. I'd like to point out that what we have here, there are oxygens missing on the yttrium uh, planes, which gives us three copper planes. So it's a 2D electronic structure. If there, are oxy if there are further oxygen vacancies, which we believe are as high as one here, they would occur in this basal plane between the bariums. Notice also the slight uh, distortion that remains down to 90 degrees of the oxygen being pushed slightly higher in these planes. Thank you very much. Okay, this uh, set of papers is...